Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Storm Talk. Uh, before we get into the storms, let's, uh, or at least the talk of it, let's talk about the snow last night. A little further to the south, uh, our in-house uh, RPM model nailed this. So did the herd model too, being more south than the NAM uh, model was aiming more up in here. Uh, but it at the end, uh, Southern County, somebody picked up a good half inch, as much as an inch of grassy accumulation on the cars and rooftops, big old flakes accumulated, good little wet snow down there to the south. All right, so that's over. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, now we're dealing with the warm front moving our way, but not today. Today our flow is still uh, the northwest. It's a cold flow. Despite some sunshine, it's going to be chilly. But tomorrow we'll get back into that warmer flow and some warm front moves in. There will be a band of clouds, by the way, that will keep on developing to the south, although the dew points are low. Uh, so the, uh, the cloud deck should be relatively high level clouds that form along it. Maybe some flurries that may try to develop as it passes through the I-71 corridor tomorrow morning, but at this point, uh, doesn't look to be that big of a deal, but uh, just kind of a heads up there. So let's talk about what's coming our way, not this weekend, but Monday to Tuesday. Monday, got a, a decent south wind. That should allow for what we call the warm air advection showers. Scattered light showers will be around. It's not going to rain all the time, and still quite warm. Then Tuesday, the front moves in. Now, the timing of the front still varying a bit on the models between morning, Tuesday, to afternoon. Overall, though, it looks to be more of a heavy rain threat than it does a severe weather threat. It doesn't mean we can't rule out severe weather at this point. It just means that if we had to weigh them out on options, heavy rain gets a higher uh, total there. Um, and then it moves on out of here by the time we get into uh, Wednesday. And here's the reason why. Here's your buildup of instability with the system um, as we head into uh, Tuesday. This is where, the, if the Storm Prediction Center is going to outline any area for uh, the chance of severe weather in their outlooks, it'd probably be drawn in this general vicinity, so the Arklatex area, maybe into portions of Mississippi. Uh, we are lacking the instability here locally in our area. It doesn't mean we can't, as we get closer in time, especially when the short range mo models like the NAM can see the system, that we can't build some instability up there. That's a possibility, so that's why we can't rule out strong storms, because notice where the instability is in the south. When you look at the wind shear, it's to the north for the Ohio Valley. They, they are displaced. They are not in the same location. So confidence is relatively low in this being anything significant when it comes to severe weather. However, it's a lot easier to build instability in a high sheared area than it is to gain the shear where the high instability is. All right. So we can't rule it out because all it takes is a small amount and then we may have a low end severe threat for Tuesday. But we uh, will just monitor it and see how it goes as we get closer. But at this point, again, does not look to be that big of an ordeal. Then we get into the fun that I've teased you about, probably unfairly, as we get into this uh, next weekend, which would be Daylight Saving Weekend. Here's a look at the models as we head into uh, this would be Saturday, next Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday. Here's the GFS, here's the Euro, and here is the Canadian um, operational and the ensembles here. Notice, just looking at the operationals, look at the difference. GFS is basically seeing a warm signal for our area for next Saturday. Euro has that, but it has a very strong area of low pressure in our neck of the woods. And when you look at the ensembles, they, they don't agree with what the Euro is showing, which is a little odd. Uh, well, not that odd, I guess, but to be that extreme of a difference in its own member, it's uh, unusual. Because when you look at the consensus of the ensembles, we see these lines, these isobars, they're tight together like that. That tells you that low pressure is developing. And they all, on the ensembles, agree it's going to be the front range of the Rockies, not over Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, so the Ural is uh, kind of, at the moment, I can only say it's a fluke run. I can't rule it out completely because it doesn't have a lot of support at the moment. If it shows up again today, midday, and again, even tonight, then it's something to pay attention to. Uh, but if it disappears at midday, then we got our answer. Um, and the reason why that it can't be ignored is because its idea is an interesting one because it wraps the low up significantly as it moves to the Ohio Valley, which would mean a rain and thunderstorm threat that could easily go to snow rapidly. I didn't say snowstorm, all right? I said rain to snow rapidly would take place if the your idea is right. And what it's trying to do is when you look at the upper air pattern, here's a piece of the polar vortex in Canada. It's trying to develop the low in an area that is relatively close to the polar vortex. So when it gets wound up, it pulls it down. And you get a lot of uh, dynamic cooling that will really kick in with that low pressure. So any rain that's still in the area can quickly go to a burst of snow and then end. It's not unheard of. When you look at the setup that the Euro has, it makes sense. 
but it doesn't have support yet from the other models. So uh, at this point, we can't uh, go with it completely, uh, but it is something we will just have to pay attention to as we get closer in time. In fact, when you look at the ensemble of the Euro, as I mentioned, it uh, indicates that the low itself is not going to be forming over Memphis, but there will be one developing in the front range of the Rockies. So let's give this one some time in the oven, as I say, and uh, let's see how it all looks in the next uh, couple days. And See if whether or not we're still talking about it when I see you guys coming up on Monday. Have a good weekend.